Rhino. Um, welcome to our first, uh, the Rhino's first virtual uh, branch water bourbon tasting. We have sold several dozen kits of uh, a nice selection of bourbon for you. Are we Are we there? Okay, we're good. So I'm Jason, this is my boss, Kevin, and we're gonna be talking about the bourbons that we've been pre-selling uh, starting right about now. <laughs> Well, uh, first off, we're going to talk a little bit about bourbon and bourbon. And what is bourbon? And what people often ask, what's the difference between bourbon and whiskey? Well, bourbon is a whiskey. Uh, the thing that makes uh, bourbon different is it's, it is basically the American whiskey. And uh, bourbon, to be called bourbon, has to be at least 51% uh, corn used in the mash as the sugar source. Um, at least 51%. Then they can also use uh, bourbon, or I mean uh, rye and wheat or barley for it. Um, and it, it can only be aged in a, um, uh, a new charred oak barrel. That barrel can only be used once to make bourbon. So uh, what we're starting off with tonight is uh, Old Forester. We have four different Old Foresters. Now, what you're going to need to, to see uh, is hopefully you have a good glass at home. We've got several different types of glasses here that you can use to put your uh, the little cups uh, that the whiskey came in. Now, remember those cups are taped to the bottom of the clamshell. So make sure that when you take those off that, that make sure that um, you don't do it too quickly. And yeah, keep the lid on. Keep the lid on, and then when, once you pull it off from the tape, then open it up. Otherwise, you might spill this very delicious whiskey. And you don't want to do that. So uh, for tasting tonight, if you've got a rock-style glass or what they call a bucket, which is a, a circular glass with a heavy bottom that's kind of squat, not too tall, um, or if you have what I like to use, this is a Glen Cairn glass from Scotland. It's perfect. Um, here's another style of that um, that you can use, the one that comes with its own uh, its own top. Um, or you can use a small glass, like a pour glass or a cordial glass, something like that. Something where it's tapering up sort of the top so that you, you can collect the uh, or, or smell the aromas that are in there. So I see a lot of you guys are, are, are signing in. We're kind of experimenting with this with this live form right now, but but feel free to, to, to make comments or ask questions and, and, and in between our our tasting, we might get to one of your questions and, and, and talk about what you want to know or what you have to say. So uh, I see a lot of people are, are, are clocking in. We're gonna kind of, we're gonna kind of keep this around the hour mark and spend about five or six minutes with, with, with each whiskey. Um, now, if you'll notice in your little packages, the order we after we tried it the other day, we switched the order around to, to maximize uh, what you're tasting and what you're smelling from these whiskeys. So the so the actual the A to I uh, um, is actually we're gonna switch it up. We'll let you know what we're doing. We are starting with the Old Forester 1910, which I think is a good a good palate pal igniter. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do it like you guys are doing it and pour these guys out here as we taste. One of the things also that you can do is you don't have to drink everything that's in each one of those. As a matter of fact, it might also be really nice if you uh, save some of it for the next few days, um, especially the last one. After we taste all of the Elijah Craig's, those are massive, massive bourbons. Um, the Willie's Distilling Million Acre Bourbon is going to be... Um, it's going to seem a little bit light, and in actuality, it's not. Uh, but because of the big ones that you're having beforehand, it'd be nice to taste it, but save some of it for another day. We've got plenty of it here. So we took a bunch of notes with this, and Jason's going to go over kind of what we got with this, starting off with? The, the Old Forester 1910. Uh, this one clocks in at 46.5%. Uh, let's see if my math skills are good. What's that? 93 proof? So this is pretty big. It's not the biggest of the bunch, but it's a good way to start. So uh, we spent about an hour and a half the other day tasting, um, really getting in depth with each of these. And so if you want to go ahead and start, I like to swirl the whiskey around. I say it doesn't make a difference, but I like to do it. So there are people, there are whiskey guys that say, no, you don't do that. And I'm like, you know, I'm really into wine. I'm really into whiskey. If you're really into wine, you are always swirling. So 
for me now, I, I swirl water. I swirl, I swirl Coca-Cola. So if somebody says to you, hey, you're not supposed to do that, tell me to shut up. You know, I'm, 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 while we're talking about water, you know, make sure you get a little room temperature water next to you that you can, you know, kind of put a couple drops in your whiskey, it might change the, the dimensions of the palate a little bit. So let's get started here. Um, you know, I like to really stick my nose into these glasses, but you know, start out here. Keep your mouth open a little bit so the air circulates th through your uh, through your system here, and, and uh, you know, most whiskeys you're gonna you're gonna smell some caramel. I definitely smell some of that. And vanilla. Uh, well, caramel, you're right. In all whiskeys, you should get a little bit of uh, caramel, but uh, in in Bourbon in particular, you should also get vanilla. And and I think the other day, what really stood out for me is that I smelled banana right right on the, right on the top of the palate or the, of the nose. And as we explored it a little bit more, we've got we you know we came across maybe some cooked apple in there or or cinnamon, um, and then even a little bit on the lighter side, a little lemon. Vanilla. I don't know what you guys think, and, and, and if you smell something in there, type it in and let us know what you smell. Um, and so if, if you're not smelling or tasting any of those things and you're getting something completely different, that's fine. Um, every palate, every sense of smell is unique. So if somebody ever tells you, no, no, you're wrong, tell them again to shut up that, uh, <laughs> that, that everybody is unique. And women have more taste buds than men do. So they can often uh, pick out and differentiate flavors better than men. All right, so now that we've spent a little time with the nose, let's go ahead and take a small sip and see what, see what happens. Remember, small sips with these whiskeys. This is, it may seem pretty big, but when you try the ones that are coming up. Um, some of them we're going to tell you ahead of time, just wet your lips with them. This one's nice. It's very easy drinking. It's a... Uh, uh, very sweet and candy like. Candy centric, yeah. I mean, I, I, I noticed a, some green apple, almost an, an apple Jolly Rancher there the other day. Um, and, and you'll notice too that the finish is kind of fleeting. It's pretty quick. And there's kind of a, a cherry uh, a cherry cream filled chocolate in there also. Um, if I'm if I'm saying some of these, are like, I, I maybe at a stretch you might be getting that. That's okay. Um, you might get something completely different. <laughs> oh, not not COVID. It's just that <laughs> we stay All right. So we're splitting one. It might take you guys a little bit longer to drink these than, than it does us. But that's probably for the better. So now that we've got that first whiskey down, go ahead and throw a little water in your glass. So what you want? Yeah, exactly what he's saying. You want to do that to clean the glass and then drink the water down so that you clean your palate and. Um, Keep hydrated. Oh, look, Elizabeth's with us. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you? Hi, Elizabeth. All right. Yeah. Let's move on to number two, huh? So, so on our list here, we 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 try the nineteen twenty, but then we decide later to switch it around to get the most out of out of. So go with with C, uh, the little cup that says C on it. Um, that is the Old Forester Statesman. It's a little bit lighter than uh, the B one, which is the uh, Old Forester 1920 Prohibition style. Yeah, those are taped on there pretty well. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Last year, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh -huh. Again, save some of this. Uh, you know, if, if, if you drink all of it tonight, you're going to have one great glow, which almost also might be a little bit lit. So. Uh, Let's find our notes for the Statesman notes one too. Okay. This one is uh, clocks in at 47.5%. Uh, so it's a little tiny bit more hot than uh, the last one. Do you want to say a little bit about the, 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 the origin of this particular whiskey? I think this was involved in Well, yeah. Uh, the, the Old Forester Statesman, if you ever saw the movie, um, The Kingsman, The Golden Circle, uh, the Kingsmen are a secret organization uh, that their headquarters is in a tailor shop in London. Um, their counterpart in the United States are called Statesmen, and their um, 
secret headquarters is at a bourbon distillery. And uh, the uh, guys from Old Forester came up with uh, this as the statesman. There's a, a scotch out there uh, from um, Glendronach, which is the Kingsman. Um, this bottle of the Statesman, I believe, is around forty dollars, yeah. maybe forty-five. Uh, a Kingsman uh, bottle from uh, Glendronach uh, costs about seven hundred, and that was two years ago. So chances are, it's quite a bit more <laughs> since then. That's a bit of a discrepancy. Okay, let's go. Okay, yeah, I remember this. Judging by the notes, this one immediately was a little nuttier to me. Less, less about candy or, or sweetness and more about a little more salt. Yeah, that cashew butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cashew butter. I'm getting that again today. Uh, I also had written down banana salt water taffy, which I thought was interesting, which I'm definitely picking up right now. Some creamy nougat, some, uh, some cherry cola, and uh, Caitlin, who was, uh, was tasting with us, also said it reminded her of walking into a cabin. Some of those nice earthy smells and sweetness. Yeah, that nut, that nuttiness is really coming through on this one. Almost like a nut crust with that mm. salty element. Yeah. That, that, that banana salt water taffy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now let's give it a taster. Very woody. Yeah, but it's a, it, it is a little lighter than the nose. The yeah, nose seems a little bit bigger. Um, but um, Woody, a little clove, cherry cola again, um, pound cake, um, creamed corn, maybe. Very quick. Again, if you guys think of something that you taste and you want to let us know, go ahead and Go ahead and, and type us a little message. You know, we'd love to hear from what, uh, how people are experiencing this at all. But yeah, I mean, it's a very, the palate's very quick. Kind of comes and goes pretty quickly. But that, but then also notice on the finish, kind of after you take a sip, breathe in and out, and, you, and you're going to get kind of a mintiness on, on your breath, which is nice. Nice and dry. Yeah, but good. that's from the, the woodiness of it. Right. So a nice, nice whiskey. Would say it definitely warrants the forty something dollar price tag. Absolutely. Oh, but it is thinner. It's thinner than that nineteen ten. Hmm. One of the things that you might do uh, before you um, put the water in the glass um, to clean it out is that if you're not sure that you were getting uh, a, a good smell from out of it, after you drink down all of the whiskey, um, the odors remain in there, but your nose isn't fighting with the alcohol. So oftentimes you'll be able to pick up some nice uh, aromas out of that um, before you put the, the water in. What is next there, oh, sir? Oh, this is one of my favorites. Oh, I love this one too. Stuff. So this is going to be the B uh, cup. Oh, that, that didn't sound right. I'm sure it is. Uh, in, uh, in your clamshell here. So um, this is this is a wonderful whiskey. I I really like this one. It's called a 1920 Old Forester Prohibition style, and uh, I think what that implies is that the alcohol content is significantly higher in this one. This one is a whopping 57.5%. So it's it's got it's going to have a little more muscle than that. Than the last it's going to have heat. So try uh, tiny sips on this one to begin with. Right. One of the things that you might try also, if you're not quite sure of what you're getting uh, from the nose is try with one nostril first and then rotate the glass over to the other one you usually have oh, I am we usually have uh, usually have one more dominant nostril than the other um, so you might be able to pick out some other stuff that way oh yeah you can smell that out oh, man. 
but I, 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 the nose is, is uh, somehow to be creamier. Oh, look at that. We did get some responses there. Okay. 1910 is the banana pancake of bourbon. That nice. Is excellent. Is that Ethan's dad? That might be. Getting a, bit of, a little bit of leather in. in oh, no. Oh, good. Now we got good. it. Now we do have at least one whiskey in here where we did definitely get a bunch of leather in the nose. Mm, but this one really stood out to me the other day. I really, really enjoy this. And, 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 and I, I, I get almost like kind of almost a, a, a like a charred tomato in this or something where you, when you heat up a, a tomato and you get the kind of the acids that get activated. It's a very pleasant. It's got that orange peel, that kind of allspice mm -hmm. also. Oh, and it. then again, I know I'm, you're going to hear me say this a lot, but there's a lot of banana in this one I can't do. <laughs> like a banana taffy or mm -hmm. banana the taffy. Cookie. Yeah. But also, you know, because I get some toffee in this. Think, have you ever had Van Offie pie? Um, it's a, I've got some, some, this, these friends of mine who are Irish couple. And, um, that was the first time I ever had Van Offie, which is a, a banana and toffee, uh, pie. And this reminds me a lot of that in the nose. Oh, it's just wonderful. Wonderful nose in this. Uh, oh, great. Okay. Uh, now, okay. Oh, we got some notes on the, on the palate too. The first one says way hotter than the previous whiskey. Now that's going to be kind of given. Given that oh, this is, is 115 proof. You can feel it right here. Mm -hmm. Rich. So rich. Rich, cherry. Yeah. Hey, what did you have? Cinnamon you red hots. The other yeah. day it just hit me. Yeah. Lots of cherry and orange in the 1920. From, yeah, Joshua Reed. Good. That's astute. Oh, I guess that's not good. Okay. Okay. Really good praline, nutty, caramel, oh, delicious nice. from Lisa Gennardi. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, nice. Good stuff. What else do we have written we down? We had uh, marmalade with a little south of the border pepper, um, some apple, and some tiramisu also. Mm. Oh, man, this is nice. This is this is a yummy. This is from Jeff. The, pro the prohibition style is creamier than I expected it to be. The note of Heath Bar. Uh huh. Yep. You're you're smelling overstepping it, aren't you? Longer finish here. Uh huh. Let's see if we have that written down. Yeah. For the yeah for the mouth for the finish long and minty is what we have, what we have written down. And again, the other thing that we really liked about this was the mouth feel and the texture. In other words, take a sip and just hold it in your mouth before before you swallow. See that's thin, medium, rich. And this to me is is big, rich, enveloping. Uh, it, and, and part of the experience of a good whiskey is somehow just the sensation that it leaves in your mouth. Uh, and this is a this is a really good example of, of an excellent whiskey. And when you finish the whiskey that's in your glass, try smelling it again before you put any water in. See if you pick up anything else. Who's fucking designing this system? You're going to walk all the way around? Oh, my God. I can't. Mm. Yeah, tremendous. Oh, this is so you should be able to get this at both of the liquor stores here in town if you're interested. I can't remember what the uh, what the uh, the cost is on it, but uh, Dave Martin says, "Hmm, I get whiskey." Yes, uh, you do. You were not wrong, sir. <laughs> oh man, that one's that one's a standout as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Oh, yeah. I hope the pace that we're doing at uh, this app works for you. Um, we're probably going a little faster than we normally do when we do we host tastings down here at the bar, but we have limited time, and I know you do too. So yeah, we're trying to get in a rhythm here, and, and as we start to wrap up the old Forester section of this, um, we're going to end it with a, a, a unique and special old, for, old Forester, and then we're going to revisit the Rhino Maker's Mark, and we'll spend a little more time with that firsthand. Uh, experiencing as you experience it all. So I'm going to switch this out for this next. Well, because we don't have, we don't. I, I tossed the empty bottle. So sorry. This was a very special uh, single barrel of an um, old Forester that was bought by Belgrade Liquor Store, in Belgrade, Montana, and they named this whiskey. How do you Montana? Oh, which we're not sure why they named it that, but it's good. Why yeah. not? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. 
So that is going to be D. D on, um, in your... All right, we're getting some feedback. People are saying the pace is good. All right, good to hear it. Good to hear it. All right. Now, it's also at, at the end of this, um, if you like the idea of what we're doing here, please let us know. Because we would like to do some more, and especially in these troubled times, uh, we know that you want to be home and be able to do it, but still feel like you're tasting with other folks and, and with friends and, and enjoying yourself. And what is this? What do we have on the numbers for this one? This is uh, this is forty five percent alcohol, so this is closer to, to the traditional proof of your everyday bourbons, which are traditionally eighty percent or eighty proof, forty percent. So this is at forty five, which is a little bit lower than the other Forsters. And would you say you pick this up at Belgrade Liquor? So Bel Belgrade Liquor selected and bottled this this barrel right? it, it will and for some of the it's the, the alcohol is a little bit um less so it's going to seem like you're coming down a little bit but you're not or that this seems a little thinner and not quite as as uh um, as good as the other ones but the thing is that it's unique and every cask is unique so a cask is to whiskey like vintage is to a wine um you can fill two casks on the same day place them side by side in the same type of barrels and after four or five years one may taste totally different than the other so um, that's what makes these 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 single barrels so unique because there's only a hundred or three hundred maybe uh, bottles in in that and that's all there is in the world so when you buy one buy two so you can drink one and keep you know, keep one in your uh, liquor cabinet helps that rate you know raise the value so let's go. Let's go. Let's go into this one. We've got some different notes oh, on this. What we do that nose is really different. But I, you know, right away I get that cherry jubilee. Cherry. I, I the other day I said cherry cheesecake. I felt there was a creaminess to the nose. Uh, that can, you said canned cherry also. Canned cherry, yeah. Orange. The cherry in a can where it has that kind of liquid with this. Then you get that that white creamy center. And we also noted that there was a, a quality of orange creamsicle there. Okay, let's see what jo J Jeff says. The nose on how do you Montana hit me first with a hint of passion fruit, just wow. barely. Oh, just like fleeting, just at first. Nice. And then, very nice. Very nice. That's good. Good and plenty candy on the nose. Oh, good and plenty candy. Boom. Oh Jan wow, Whitman, you nailed it, buddy. Wow. That is right on the very line. cool. I get that. That's picture. a very specific mm -hmm. uh, description. But that's, that's the beauty of smell is that sometimes it accesses a very specific uh, memory that you have or something, and it's it's an yeah. important thing. Uh, it's, that's I like that. I might have to write that down. Like this, that's what deja vu is. Is deja vu is Good is any you know, smelling something and all of a sudden it just takes you back to something in your past. All right. So on the palate, let's, let's take a little sip here and see what happens. Yeah, you made that seem so... Not as rich as the other ones. It seems like it's, it's a little bit lighter, but there's still yeah, a lot there. Yeah, to me, there's a thinness there in the palate. So if you have this one by itself, if you happen to ever be down in, in Belgrade, then go ahead. Lisa says that the nose was kind of honeydew. Yeah. That's what our social media lady said yesterday. She just pointed out to my notes off camera. So, and and like we said, women have more taste buds. So I'm going to have to defer to you on that. And you should get it also in the palate too. There should be a little bit in there. And we also got in this some shish kebab charred veggies a little bit in, in there. And uh, a lighter uh, cigar tobacco. And Jason also got a little tea out of this. What kind of tea do you think it was? Uh, uh, you know... <laughs> Nothing fancy, just like lipped in tea, like a like a like an iced tea without the ice. Just some, I mean, there's something the quality of the way it hit, hit the sides of my tongue that reminded me of drinking like sun tea or some light tea in the, in the, in the summer. But it's nice. I mean, it's, and and as I said, if you started with this one, uh, there it would seem like it was a lot lot bigger. Mm -hmm, right. So, you know, we have written down a pleasant, light, and dry finish, which I think is accurate.
Mm. That's nice. That, 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 that mintiness and that and the finish again. It's, it's, I went like through the pleasantness there. But right, right at the very beginning of the finish, there's also something that's mixed in with that um, with that mint. It's, God, I'm trying to think of what that is. If you, can, if, you, if you get something with that, please let us know. Okay, we're doing pretty good on time here. We're about 25 minutes in here. Um, we're hoping everybody's logged in and having a good time. Um, I think we're doing all right. And, and that kind of wraps up our uh, our, our old Forester session. Um, I think old, old Foresters are really, I just really enjoy Old Forester in general. All their products that I've tasted are, are, are good. They're they're semi affordable. They they are know? they're they're solid. And if you ever get a chance to, they put out a twelve year uh, every year called uh, the birthday bourbon. Um, if you can find it, it usually it's just released at one time during the year, usually in the fall. Yeah, uh, oftentimes it doesn't make it out uh, onto the shelves at the liquor stores. Um, there, the liquor store owners might have a list in the back of uh, people who are dying to get one of these bottles. But if you ever see one, go ahead and buy it because you're going to be treated with something really, really unique and really special. Um, Old Forester makes wonderful bourbon and has some great, incredible bourbons that I love. But this one is a work of art. Okay, so we're doing pretty good on time here. Now we're gonna we're gonna show you something that, like the uh, last uh, old forester we tried, is something unique to Montana that Kevin himself uh, engineered and uh, which taste Kevin engineered. I'll let I'll let him say a little bit. <laughs> okay. This is part of uh, Maker's Mark Private Select label. What you do is you go down to uh, Maker's Mark and you taste. Uh, the base whiskey, which is a, a six-year-old cask strength. Cask strength, that means uh, it hasn't been watered down at all. It is, it is the uh, alcohol content that's coming right straight out of the cask. Um, and then you have five other whiskeys that you try. And um, each of these whiskeys are treated uh, a little bit differently. They're all white oak, but one is... Um, Oh gosh, uses a convection oven. One uses infrared light. One, they add something different to the, the char on the inside. And what you do is you mix and match from those until you find your own recipe of what you like. And um, I was lucky enough to find one that I thought was, was really good. And we were able to taste that. And then what they do is um, they take that, that um, six-year-old cask strength whiskey, and then they take the barrel head, the round top off, and they put inside an empty barrel this uh, um, metal insert. And into that metal insert are placed 10 new staves um, that have been freshly charred. So that's being added uh, into that. And then they put the barrel head back on again, and then they um, uh, fill it up with this uh, six, six-year-old cask strength bourbon. Then after eight to nine weeks, they bottle it and they sent it to Montana. Um, I think if you look at some of our uh, social media, you could see me holding up uh, uh, one of the, the things, of, uh, oh, it was a, a group of the staves that were gonna be going in there and me uh, filling up the, uh, the barrel. But uh, it, it really did well. We had 246 bottles in, which really kind of worried me. And then, um, we went through all, uh, sold all 246 bottles within or right around two months. And uh, it really, really went well. I'm hoping to get back down to Kentucky in June to buy a couple of other uh, barrels, but not from Maker's Mark this time. If this is something you really like, I think we do have a, a bottle or two that we're selling by the ounce of the Rhino, or is this? Is that, I think this is idea? this is it right here. So if you if you like it, come on in and 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 buy it. But otherwise, this is it. So we so we tried this uh, the other day after we had tried the big Elijah Craig's, and to tell you the truth, we couldn't get a lot out of it um, because our our palates were so blown out from those high octane alcohols. But now. Even in the nose already, I'm getting so much more in this. So what's the right. what's the the letter on that one? That is the H. That's the H, yeah. Okay, so, so that's the H that we're tasting. And this is this is high octane. This is fifty four point two five percent. 
108 and a half proof. That's pretty big. Mm. Mm. The teriyaki really, really stands out to me. I get, I get uh, a lot of teriyaki when I was this one, or Asian, or you know, Asian sauce, where it's salty and sweet kind of at the same time. And I'm getting coffee cake. <clears throat> okay, and yeah, we we noticed that the other day. So it's good to see that our, our fellows are pretty consistent here. Cocoa powder again, uh, some chocolate without the sweetness, like a milk chocolate. Tomato, basil. Um, I think I, I'm getting that again too here. Just a little bit around it, not, not heavy. No, no. Ah, it's nice. Oh, white chocolate. I mean, right now, I mean, with that, with, you know, bringing up that, that basil tomato, I would like to have this with, uh, what do you call those Italian uh, salads with the fresh mozzarella and the basil? Oh, tomato. right. I think that would, the caprese salad. Caprese you know, salad. Oh. Yeah, I think this would go really nice with that. I mean, you don't really want to usually pair whiskey with the uh, Italian food, Just like in this case. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maple, okay. Maple to me says nice. banana. Is that one? There have okay. been other folks that have uh -huh. that tasted the maple in that some, also. The nose has, Shelly says the nose has some floral to me. I have to go back and, and revisit there. Any particular uh, flower of any kind? <laughs> Barbecue notes says Brent. Yeah, oh, definitely. Big time, big that tomato time. basil. Dill on that. Okay, Ken, Ken, Ken's diving right in with this one. On this one, he's saying there's dill on the aftertaste. Of that. So you can see how uh, when a lot of the, the bourbons earlier were reminiscent of candy or chocolate, this one has a lot more a culinary aspect to it. Oh. Almost, you know, it's just lovely. It would be good with some Italian meatballs. Yeah. See. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know, huh? mm -hmm. Dominic says, I also get pepper. Uh, do you mean black pepper, white pepper? I mean, can you, can you... Chili pepper? Mm -hmm. That's what the, the, the interesting thing is. So there's so many different avenues when it comes to spice. Dandelion, there you go. Oh, oh wow. Wonderful. So this was a very fun whiskey. So that's one of the things we're going to try down here at Rhino over this next year. If I can get down to Canada or down to Kentucky and they, uh, um, if the airlines are open and, and the distilleries are open to the public. But I, I found it interesting that, that the feedback we got on this one, there was such a wide array of responses. And, and like, again, none of them are wrong. Everyone's, everyone's uh, smell, you know, smell and taste. Oh, there you go. White pepper. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank Good. you. Thanks for replying because that's where I was going with that. Excellent. What else do we write down here on the palate? We got milk dud. We said we thought the other day. I don't know if that's as pertinent today. Cherry cream, coffee cake. And then again, on the finish, there's the dryness to the finish. And, and we have written down uh, the York peppermint patty, which is a very specific. So you get that on chocolate the in there with that mm -hmm. sweet. York peppermint patty, that is very uh, specific, and that's that's wonderful. Wonderful mouthfeel, too. Yeah, it's a tremendous, that's a tremendous whiskey. Mm. It's so much more enjoyable today. It really is. Our taste buds were pretty fatigued after uh, Elijah Craig's, which are coming up um, next. Yeah, keep drinking that water in between the tapes of taste of whiskeys and try to keep that palate fresh for this because th these next three are going to be pretty pretty exciting and especially this first one that we're going to do you're going to want to just wet your lips with it first before you take a sip um just so you know what's coming it is massive And what I'd like to do is bring up uh, each of these different uh, whiskeys so that you can actually see what they look like because on first glance, they look exactly the same. Uh, it says uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. But then down here in this little uh, square down here, right there, it says what the batch number is. 
And the first one that we're going to be starting with is the barrel proof um, A119. So that's marked E in your package here. Again, please just wet your lips first. <laughs> it's big. Yeah, this uh, this comes in at 67.6%. 67.6. So massive. 135. Point two. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. All right, All right. Tap in here and let's see what we let's see what we got. Let's go. Big buttery, creamy. Yeah, butterscotch right right off the bat. And then Nutella. Which is hazelnut, isn't it? No. Mm -hmm. Some walnut. What else are you getting out of that? Well, the walnut is definitely prevalent there. You can smell the difference in the alcohol. Yes, sir, you can. Scott, thank you, Scott. Oh, yeah, this is huge. But no, I'm really getting that walnut. And so then, when, when you do sip this, remember tiny, tiny, tiny sips. Cool. Man, that just goes right up your sinuses. Mm -hmm. uh, another interesting uh, taste note we had from the other day. Uh, in the nose, we came up with, and, th and this is how, how, it's not only the smell, but almost the texture of the smell, which doesn't really make sense. But we've got a, what did we get? I remember reading this, coffee cake with butter. So in other words, like a warm piece of coffee cake with like a pad of butter that's melting on there. And it's very specific smell, but I definitely got that. Butterscotch, says Lisa. Yes, indeed. And we also got a toffee flavor cream yeah to the nut nose that's right it's very nutty i get walnut you might get a, a, a different nut and boy you can really feel the heat right here it's lacy a, says hi kevin so happy to see your face who is that is lacy hawkins may lacy oh so nice to hear from you i miss you all right let's dig in there. whoa oh boy that those those sips i mean oh. just boom This is the biggest of all the whiskeys you'll be trying tonight. It's so good. It is so good. <laughs> it's so good. This is my favorite out of the three Elijah Craig's, but oh, it's so good. That mouthfeel is so intense, but so enjoyable. There's a taste of praline, says mm -hmm. Scott, mm -hmm. one of our frequent contributors. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There there is. Is. I think we I think we mentioned that the other day too. Just warm. Just warm. Mm. Okay, and we are, on our notes, we, we talk about the finish, a medium dry, minty, charred vegetable finish. And there's a lot of words, but man, what a whiskey. This may be one that at home, at home you want to maybe just put a drop or two of water in. I didn't do that the other day. I'm going to do it right now to see if it changes. And one of the ways that you can do it if you're, so that you're not worried about putting too much in is if you, the, the bottled water that you got, just put a little bit of water into the cap and then just throw in a, just a, a couple of drops and See, just and that, that might have even been too much. You just want to open the whiskey up a little bit. You don't want to dilute it too much. Okay. So the unique thing about whiskey, is, especially good whiskey, is that you could actually have um, three different whiskeys in one ounce of whiskey. So what you would do is, is try the whiskey straight up um, without anything added to it. See how it tastes. Then uh, try it by adding just a few drops of water into it to let it open up, especially if the, the whiskey has a little bit of a bite to it. Um, that bite should dissipate, and uh, you should be getting some new things out of the nose and out of the flavor. And then the last one that you can do is take a small ice cube, put that small ice cube in there, and the cold um, anesthetizes your tongue and dulls it, and therefore it changes uh, the character and the flavor of the whiskey again. Hi, Sarah. Phenomenal. 
Ben's a phenomenal whiskey, in my opinion. Beautiful. All right. So we'll put that one away. Now the next one is, which is the B. Yeah, that's uh, that's F in your packet. This is F, and it is uh, the five seventeen. This came out two years ago in uh, 2017, and it was uh, Whiskey Advocate Magazine's Whiskey of the Year. Um, there have been several B batches since then, uh, B518 and B519, but um, this one, this was the, the one that I remember uh, first off, and this one is great too. It's at 61.1 uh, or 62.1 percent alcohol. Oh, thank you. You're good there. Yep, yep. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, this one reminded us a lot of candy. So one of the things that I, especially with uh, some of the single malt scotches that I've had in the past, uh, there's one um, distillery in particular called Dalmore, where um, they often say, take a very dark chocolate and, and taste that with your whiskey and see if it makes a difference. Now this one, we've got the Lint Excellent uh, 85%. And uh, Jason, if you would open that, and let's give it a try and see how that goes with this. I think you said, as Shelly just uh, said, uh, she gets some toasted marshmallow out of this, which I'm pretty sure you brought up the other day. One of, one of the three of us did. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, no. Thanks, sir. Uh -huh. So, whenever you're, you're, you're tasting whiskey uh, and you're having food with it, taste the whiskey first. So, you know what it's like without anything compromising your palate. Then take a bite of whatever food that you have, and then taste it again. And see how the food that you have changes the uh, character and flavor of the whiskey. So, what are we getting with this one? Man, I'm getting chocolate all over the place on this one. All sorts of chocolate. Oh man, we brought up almond joy the other day. I think we said raisinets, which I think right now I'm getting right off right off the bat. We've got a couple people. That have alternate. Okay, Jessica is saying she's getting leather on the nose, which nice. I think Kevin brought up the other day. And Jeff is Jeff is saying tobacco first notes. Very cool. Which I th also think is totally right on the money. And maybe around the outside of it, a little honeysuckle. Yeah, a fleeting a fleeting hint of honeysuckle around outside of all these big chocolate notes. Definitely smooth. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Brown sugar on the nose from Jesse. Hey, Jesse, I remember selling you this today. Good to see you. Or hear from you. Or read what you're saying. Oh, that's good. This is this is impressing me a lot more than it did the other day. I think I was so blown away by the A the, the, the other day that I kind of ignored what was going on with this. I mean, this is rich. It is. It is. But it's kind of quick. It's like you got to, you know, hold it in your, in your mouth just a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it finishes pretty quick. Well, I think that honey su uh, suckle is is relevant in the in the palate because it has the you know how honey's kind of heavy, but honey suckle is a, a lighter a lighter thing. Try it with this and see how it makes. Or if you have any chocolate at all. It is a lot quicker. But I'll tell you what, with this chocolate, all of a sudden I'm getting more like sauteed butter in it I after think, tasting this. I think yesterday we said something about honey butter, or apple and, butter, and it makes it a little uh, a little brighter in the in the palate. Uh, mm -hmm. The whiskey now also doesn't mm -hmm. really that's really it's interesting to see how much that just that little bit that you have changes uh, changes the flavor of this. Brent Getty, most complex one so far. Mm. Interesting. Good chocolate too. Mm, that is a dark chocolate. Oh, I like this one. So it's 
it, it was Whiskey Advocate Magazine's Whiskey of the Year, and it was the first year um, that they actually had a Whiskey of the Year. This, the publisher of this is the same publisher who does Wine Spectator and Cigar Aficionado. And Wine Spectator's had a Wine of the Year for um, 40 years, maybe more. And uh, as soon as that rating comes out as Whiskey of the Year in December, it's gone off the shelf like that. And that's what also happens with a lot of these whiskeys now, too. Well, here's an interesting comment from Scott. Uh, he brings up one of Kevin's favorite descriptions of whiskey, which is bananas foster, which is Kevin loves to taste banana foster. He, he brings it up a lot. So I think you're right here. This is quite good. Very nice. When you bring up bananas foster, I happened to be in um, London one time for a, uh, a tasting of very rare, very old, very expensive whiskey. There are only 25 bottles of it in the world. And um, I happened to be at a, a five course dinner that um, had a, a grain whiskey from the 1960s. And this, uh, this thing was just amazing. Uh, grain whiskeys are made from wheat as opposed to malt whiskeys, which are made from barley. And this thing, when I tasted it, started like uh, pineapple ice cream and finished like Bananas Foster. I've never tasted anything like it. And the guy that brought the bottle said, don't ask me. This is the last one I had that, that, I, that I've got. So I just followed him around for the rest of the night to enjoy it. Speaking about prices on bottles, uh, Lisa is asking uh, how much a bottle of this particular whiskey would cost. I don't uh, know if you can you find it. Uh, it's, it's one that came out, I said, close to three years ago or more than three years ago. And uh, um, if you could, I would say maybe around $60, $70. So there are incredible bourbons that are coming out right now. And that may seem like a lot, but the reality is, is that if you have um, single malt scotches, uh, this is a drop in the bucket. And so, you know, when it comes to value, uh, bourbon is great. Can you find any of this? Maybe. Um, I would, if you're in a small town in, in Montana somewhere and you're going through and there's a state liquor store, go in and see that they might have one. But remember, it's the 517. And you have to look all the way down here to find that let's uh, give, in let's the give black. People, let's give people a close oh, that's up. That's a good there. idea. Okay. You can really, well, let's see if I can. If that helps. Yeah, and I think it might be. Is that hand written on there? It is. So, as I said, there have been two B batches since then, uh, the 518 and the 519. Um, we will have the 518 uh, uh, available here at the bar if you want to come down and give it a try. And as I say, go into a liquor store, see if they might have it somewhere that they don't even know what they have. All right, let's move on to the seat. Which is going to be your C is your G. Now we also have some of these kits left over. So we've got oh, about a little over a dozen out of what do we have? Almost 80. Uh, so we have about a dozen left. So if, if you um, would like to, you can still come down and get some of these kits. Yeah, and, and, and you know, while we're talking about that, uh, I just want to thank Missoula for, for making this uh, a great event, and we're uh, we're just blown away by the response we've been having this, and we would love to keep doing this, and if you guys are having a good time, we're having a good time, so, uh, you know, give us your feedback, and thanks uh, for seeing, it's, it's so good to see so many people participating, uh, it makes it more fun for us, and hopefully it makes more fun for you guys. So, uh, with that, we'll move on to the last of the big Elijah Craigs, uh, the C, which is at a whopping 65.7%. This is the C918. I found a bottle yesterday at, uh, they have one left at Grizzly Liquor here in town, and it was uh, the C920. So I know that they're here, and there may be some of these at, well, I don't think Chris has any, but you never know. Look around for them. They may have some up at, uh, Oh, Montana wine and, and liquor or liquor and wine up in Kalispell, or there might be some at uh, Belgrade Liquor. Those are those and the two liquor stores in town in Missoula are the best four liquor stores in the city. 
So often if you go into those places, you can find them. All right, good. We're getting some great feedback. All right, let's let's move on to uh, Elijah. Like I said, this one's at 65.7, another giant, big, giant whiskey. Big. Vanilla, vanilla custard. So Shelly's coming back with vanilla custard. Great. Oh, nice. Excellent. Excellent. All right, let's move on to see and see what we got. Do a little... Uh, Research on what we said the other day. Okay, okay, I'm remembering this one. This one is le way less to do about sweetness and more to do about what I like to call Italian kitchen tastes. One of my Man, favorite things to say. I'll tell you right now, I'm getting almost a cookie in that oh, really? in that nose. Oh, whoa! I, I, I spoke before I smelled. Yeah, cookies and cream, big time. Cookies and cream, maybe even a little spice in there, or like a graham snook, cracker, like a, or a snooker doodle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm getting graham cracker now. Totally different than from, from, from the experience we had the other day, which is kind of the fun thing about tasting these whiskeys. Wow. Well, this bottle also was open today. Whiskeys, wow. especially complex whiskeys, will open a bit just like uh, it does. If you taste it and a bitter bite to it, set it aside for a little while and then come back to it. That bite will completely dissipate. Let's go. Let's let's rewind for one second. Jesse's uh, uh, typing in. He was wanting to know what the third liquor store you said was outside of Missoula and Belgrade. Uh, so, Belgrade is in Kalispell, Kalispell. and it's called, uh, I believe, it's Montana Liquor and Wine. It's uh, as you're going into Kalispell, it's on the left hand, and it's right next to the Mackenzie River Pizza uh, oh, Company. Cool. Great. We're getting a lot. Okay, we're getting a lot of people telling me what they. Oh, everybody says that they're all saying this one is hot. And they're also saying we got Lisa's saying cinnamon toast crunch. I love that. Oh, wow. I love that. Nailed it. That's probably what I was trying to get to when I said a half a dozen different things. Now, this one, when you taste it, this is very fleeting. Yeah. So, you know, take a tiny sip mm. and see if you can nail anything because all of a sudden Ooh. it just goes straight to the finish. Dominic saying Nilla wafers, which I think is <laughs> right on. You're nailing it. This is it. You got it. Mm, and then there's some cherry there. That's a great liquor store, says Brent. Yep, yeah, okay. Oh, man. That's just got sweetness all over it, too. Mm. Big. It's much sweeter than it was. You know, the thing about a, 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 a whiskey like this is you can take a glass like this and put about this much into the glass, just about this much, and uh, watch a movie on TV. And with something this big, you'll probably still have some left in your glass by the end of it oh. it'll leave you warm <laughs> this, and is this, hot. Is, this is so hot right now. this is a, a winter yeah. warmer what else have you got there somebody's saying red hots yep oh. scott saying red hots jeff says the first note is alcohol is my nose burned out <laughs> yeah, that might be a little bit you your your sense of smell and your sense of taste can become fatigued mm -hmm. Especially with whiskeys this big, but um, I, also, I also said the other day this is kind of an off thing to smell. But I I, I smelt a, a, a essence of uh, cumin spice in in with, 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 you know which is kind of behind all the other big smells. And you also said like a fleshy slice mm -hmm. of pepper also, yeah, and maybe a craisin. Have you ever had that? Yeah, no, we have craisin in there too. Yeah, leather again too. But uh, like we said on the palate, once you get past the heat. It's kind of a fleeting palate. It's it's kind of quick. It's kind of there and gone. But there's a dryness uh, with the the toffee there that's almost a little bit bitter. There's a uh, an unsweetened toffee called treacle, and you might get a little bit of that with this too. Ooh, I'm getting some again some green apple there on the on the back end of the palate. Nice. I'm enjoying this more so today than I did the other day. I am too. This is very good. Very good. A little lighter. Mm. Oh, it just warms you up. Just an explosion of spice. Okay, we're coming up. Uh, we're coming on a, up on fifty-five minutes here, so I think our, our timing is pretty much perfect here to wrap it up with our bonus whiskey, um, which Kevin's going to say a little bit about uh, before you go ahead and commit to drinking it today. 
maybe this is a whiskey that you might want to save and just listen to us talk about today and go and revisit tomorrow when your palate has had a little time to recover. That's just my opinion. So, so um, you've just had three really massive whiskeys. Um, this is Willie's Distilling out of uh, Distillery out of uh, Ennis, Montana. This is their Million Acre Bourbon. Million Acre is kind of, it's, it's basically the uh, Bighorn Bourbon, which you, I'm sure you've seen before, that uh, is on steroids. And this is is lovely. But the thing with this, you might taste it a little bit, but it's gonna it's going to seem pretty um, light compared to what you just had. So take a little taste of it, but save the rest for tomorrow or the next day, and then try it again by itself and see that it really does seem a lot bigger and is it really comes into its own. Um, I think these guys have, this is one of the best whiskeys made yeah. in Montana. I mean, well, yeah. While we're on camera, I'd just like to say that. We here at the Rhino would like to give a big shout out to Willie's Distillery. I think they're one of the best distilleries in the state, and we're blown away by their Big Horn and their Snowcrest Vodka, which I think is a, an excellent vodka. Just wanted to say hey to you guys. You guys do a great job. Keep doing what you're doing. Okay, this is the last one. This is I. Give it a try. This is at 50% and it's four years old. Now, uh, bourbons that are at, at 50% and four years old are typically called bottled and bond. And I think it's probably an old prohibition term that had to do with bonded whiskey and bonded warehouses. But um, nowadays, it, basically that's what it means is that it's 50% and at least four years old. Oh, what? I just, there's a root in there or something. Well, like there that. is. You know, there's there's that, uh, like you were saying, a sassafras, some kind of like a root effervescent soda of some type. Um, is it a cream soda in there with that? Mm -hmm. um, but I, what I got out of this was like a vanilla flavored cigar. Oh, it's, there's something else in here, too. Again, I got hot tomato. Is there more wax in that? No. Yeah, man. Yes, there is some wax in the way that it that, that you smell in the way it almost coats the inside of my nose. Yeah. Again, if you guys, if th this is a very unique whiskey, so something that's hitting you, let us know. Stale root beer. <laughs> there you go, Josh. Thank you. Little root beer or root beer float. Right, but I, I think when he's saying stale, like you're you're getting what we were saying. It's not. You know, when somebody, oh, hey, Albert. Hey, Albert. Yeah. Thanks, Albert. Uh, he's going to, Jeff's saying he's going to save it for breakfast. Nah, nah, nah. Not as much fun as coming to the Rhino, but for shelter in place, a great idea. Thank and you, remember, sir. you can't drink all day and start in the morning. I mean, yup, stale root beer. Everybody's into that. I taste birch beer. So, again, you're getting that sweetness mixed with a little tobacco hit. Yes, Shelly, definitely. And the, but I, I'm, I'm stuck on you're saying there's a, there's a waxy element to that nose, to that and nose I totally right agree with you. But um, so we get that rhubarb awesome. is there big time, yeah. Oh gosh, rosemary sautéed butter in the nose. Now on the, the taste, the palate, um, cream, orange cream soda. Man, while we're sticking with the nose, I just I'm getting right now like like artichoke. I'm getting. Like, like, you know, when you do like the butter and the artichoke? Mm. Oh, wow. Nose. The clothes you wore at a campfire. There you go. Now, there's a the smell. I like that. That's great. Let us know what kind of wood you were burning at your campfire, and we'll let you know if you're correct. That's a joke. Oh. Ooh. Cinnamon. It's got a fluffy palate. Very, it's so different from Elijah Craig's and the Old Foresters. Oh, hey, Chantal, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, this is nice. Even after those big whiskeys we had, this is still coming coming out nice. The, the mouthfeel really hits me. There's a fluffiness to, to, to the way mm. that the, 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 the taste kind of hits your mouth. It's quite good. It is perfume. I think it's perf a little perfumier, though. 
the no, it's not, or the, the palate. Not but the one of the things that we got yesterday or two days ago and we tasted all these was like a kid's vitamin. Uh, ah, on, yes. We got in there, there was something like a Flintstone vitamin kind of thing, something like that. Um, see if, if you get any of that in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, great. This is great. Mm. Man, we nailed it. We are exactly at the one hour mark right now. So we're going to we're going to wrap it up now. And again, we're going to thank Missoula for participating. Uh, we had a great time. I hope you had a great time. Uh, again, give us a, give us some feedback. We'll put some together uh, down the road. And uh, hey, cheers, Missoula. And I've been thinking, you know, what a couple of ideas of some things that we might be able to do. Either another bourbon tasting like this, or for single malt scotches, we have the whole Game of Thrones lineup of some pretty cool stuff. And then in late May, we're going to be doing uh, Art Bag Day. So if you have some ideas for some things that you might think be you know, would We've already got a couple well. people uh, wanting scotch tastings, and then Shelly's just saying, how about a tequila tasting in the future? We already got a couple likes there. So okay. I think I think we've got our lineup. Well, great. And we'll, we'll uh, probably within the next two to three weeks, we'll have another one lined up for you, and we'll we'll let you know what's coming. And please just uh, stay with the social media and uh, just to echo what – um, Jason was saying, thank you so much for your support, and uh, and we hope to see you here in the bar pretty soon. Cheers, Missoula. See you on the 4th, hopefully. <laughs> and we're out. Actually, may the 4th be with you. Ah.